We got Dragon Ball Spark and Zero 17 years after Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi 3. The fans have been screaming and demanding something for this series, with some of us, like me, settling for as little as a remaster. Ooh. Fan games fueled the nostalgia, adding in characters like Hit and Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta, all the while Bandai was cooking something we never saw coming. When that first trailer dropped and quite literally broke the internet, I knew gaming needed this. Now that might be a bit dramatic, but come on, I'm dramatic. From the ashes of Budokai Tenkaichi 3 rose Sparking Zero, which serves as a spiritual successor to my personal favorite childhood game. Most of the time we're getting remasters from these huge companies which are cool, but also safe. Bandai decided to take a fan favorite game and go one step further to create my personal game of the year. They went back to their roots and also added a modern flair. It's amazing how nostalgic this game makes me feel, but also how refreshing it is. The Budokai Tenkaichi series was the modern inspiration for most anime arena fighters, so to see this specific game take the crown back feels great after we've seen years of Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm, Demon Slayer Hino Comic Chronicles, and even Dragon Ball Xenoverse and so many more. Arena fighters do sometimes get a bad rep from the fighting game community as a whole. As a subgenre, it gets discredited, but it's also hard to adapt anime into 2D classic fighters or platform fighters without feeling like you're kind of limiting yourself. Aside from all the side eyes Spark and Zero has gotten, this game has been a major W for not only the anime gaming community, but the gaming community at large. I'll explain why, then Zero in... <laughs> <laughs> on why Sparking Zero is the shit. In a world full of inflated budgets, major flops, and safe options, it's cool to see Bandai go a safe route, but not go too safe. Making a continuation of a game from almost two decades ago feels pretty risky, but also pretty smart. You capitalize on one of the most nostalgic fan bases there is, but also one that's loyal and spends money. We wanted a reminder of why we love these games, but instead got a master class in one of God's greatest creations anime games. When I think of games that could also do this same modern spin on a cult classic, I think of games like God of War. That top-down, hack-and-slash, gory gameplay still has a place in the industry. Sure, you could simply remaster God of War 1, 2, and 3, please Sony, please, 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 but you could also make a new entry telling a different story, or a one-off adventure with Atreus, or just create a modern-day prequel. These games don't cost much to make, and could satisfy the nostalgia crowd as well as bring a new crowd who appreciate the original gameplay. Or not. Spark and Zero got through or not. I love this game, but I also have a lot of nostalgia from BT3. It's easy to see who played Budokai Tenkaichi 3 and are having a great time remembering what Peak is, and those who are looking at this series with fresh eyes, but still trying to apply other games' filter to it. I see this game as a casual Dragon Ball simulator that has online and ranked play. It's not meant to be an Evo, and it's not meant to be a game you can become a professional at for an esports org. I mean, you can, but that's not the point of the game. Every game we get in the anime community does not have to be competitive. In fact, looking at it from that perspective might ruin the pure fun of the experience for you. They create a game just for fun in this space. There's no pressure to be a goat at this game. It's just fun content to digest, and even though myself and others like me assumed the game would be a bit more high pressure in the competitive scene, once we got into it, we realized that wasn't the case at all. We need more games that are just fun. As much as I love this game, I do have a few gripes even if I can justify the artistic direction. First of all, the story mode is just confusing. I mean, I played the story mode a million times, so I know how it's supposed to go, but I would have enjoyed one cohesive story instead of a story with a perspective of each individual contributor that you have to play through as weirdly as you do. Also, it's just really ugly in between fights, like, ew. Do something about that. Keep the what if episodes by hitting certain battle requirements though. That Gohan Black branching path was amazing. I see that Kakarot is the definitive story retelling with beautiful cinematics and enough of the timeline that we're satisfied with the base game and all additional stories can be given us via DLC. But I still rather run through the story via sagas instead of by character. But whatever is what it is. The difficulty and the cinematics whenever they decide to give them to us are also amazing and I'm not mad at what they did. I just would have done some things differently. A pretty true to lore anime game full of content made by both the developers and the community, Sparking Zero is amazing for fans of anime games and the gaming community at large. But don't just take my word for it, take it from others in the community. So there's no better way to talk about Dragon Ball Sparking Zero than to have someone on and beat their ass while talking about Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. So here we have Glide. What's up Glide? Yo what's good? The ass beating is is not com coming my way but I, I got you me and glad were actually in a content creator tournament and we both got like spam beerus key blast out it was it was kind of crazy it was insane <laughs> i that was my first time playing against uh someone that used that method of winning so i thought it was cheesy but i guess i'm just not good enough apparently so yeah but glad, i just i got a few questions for you as we as we prepare to throw hands um, so you're old enough to remember when Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi 3 came out, right? And like playing that as a kid? Yep. Yep. 
So what do you what do you think that sparking like overall means to the community? Cause like I'm here for nostalgia, you know? Uh I think it means a lot. It it really means a lot. Um even people that aren't uh relatively in the community as often as we are, it, it's it's like culture. It's like a part of the culture. Um because we got a lot of people that ended up buying Playstations and Xboxes just to play this game. So I think it goes past just the basic community that we interact with daily i was i was thinking about that because um i seen a lot of people who just didn't play bt3 and they're like they like the game i'm like you don't know what it means like this is this is like <laughs> this is everything does yeah it's 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 bigger it's bigger than uh what you know just the normal person would think um bt3 in my eyes it's my second favorite dragon ball game it's my second favorite Dragon Ball. What's your favorite? Uh, Budokai, Budokai Three. Budokai Tenkaichi Two. Bud I mean, Budokai OG, two. OG, OG Budokai, Budokai Three, three. Okay. is my favorite Dragon Ball game okay. personally. Uh, but Tenkaichi Three is a close second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, bro. You um, you you you, you okay? I thought you'd be more of a challenge. Uh, I I told you <laughs> I I I suck when I'm like trying to think and play, and and play fighting games. But I, I'm doing my best. <laughs> I'm doing my best. You're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this though. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, so speaking of the community, how do you think the community is receiving this game? Because I see some people who are um, complaining a lot, and some people who are just like, "Shut up and enjoy the game. You don't know what we got." Uh, <laughs> and it it kind of goes back to people who who had uh, BT3 and who didn't. I'm a bit. Eh. I'm in between because I hear both sides. I hear I hear both sides, yeah. and with us being like creators, it's kind of like. It's only so much you can complain as a creator because, like, if you're trying to make decent content, you got to be somewhat good at the game, but also, yeah, but also, you know, you got to be, uh, you, you you can't just go with what like what we've been given. You got to actually like for me, the best creators are the people that actually point out what can be better in the long run, yeah, rather than just like, oh yeah, yeah. this is this is what it is, and then we should be grateful for it. I don't I don't do that kind of content personally, but. Uh, yeah, I, it, it's it's a hard one for me to answer personally. Uh, I think that man, I suck. I suck while talking. But uh, <laughs> uh I think I, <laughs> he tried to throw their hands. He just can't. Yeah, I, I like my brain just does not. Yeah, my brain can't compute with what I'm saying and playing at the same time. But uh, what was I saying? Yeah, when it comes to the people, because because I, I do see the concerns, like the the fusions being like the meta, um, for especially for well, that's every Dragon Ball thing that, ever. That, like that even is with, even with it is Legends. Like in Legends, you run a fusions team. What do you mean? That's something like you guys have not played games like Dragon Ball games. They're the characters are gonna be stronger. That's that, the whole. That's the point. Not the whole point. They're, Cause you can you like in fighters there is like balancing, but if you want a balanced game, you gotta go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not getting that here. Here's the here's the, and that's not what I expected. Here, here's the thing though. This is this is why I kind of agree with both. Like, yes, you're playing with fusion, so they're gonna obviously be stronger. They're gonna be better, and they should be. Um, I think if it's so if 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 we're if there's a ranked if there's a ranked mode. There should be more balancing, and it shouldn't be the exact same as when you're playing like a player match, or you're just playing with your buddies personally. Um, like I, I was talking to Soul, Soul is Soul. For those that don't know, y'all can look him up. But I was talking to him not too long ago, and I was like, uh, we were just talking like there can be some things to balance, uh, balance the game a little bit better. And I, one solution I came up with, especially for fusions, they can be, they can keep the strength. They can keep their strength. I don't care that they're stronger than other characters because they should be. But I feel like across the board, every character should have the same amount of health. And that's an easy fix. Yeah, especially in rank. I think that too. I think that, I think it's crazy that like you can do a fusion and get like three health bars health bars back if you do it right. Like that's no, crazy. yeah, that too. I haven't I haven't played too much DP on rank, but like uh, that's a whole yeah. The fact that you can tr you can fuse and then gain three health bars back is kind of insane. It's kind of insane. Yeah, and and one of my biggest complaints about ranked isn't necessarily that it is really the health thing. It's it's the health. Like yeah. if we're playing if we're playing rank, like max out, you know. 
at three health bars or something for every character, like you said. That's that's because then it's about skill. That's about playing the game. Exactly, exactly. If you pick a strong character, they they should be strong. They should hit harder. I'm I'm cool with that. That's not a problem for me. It's the health. It's the health things. Like they're they're already strong, and then on top of that, you give them more health. On top of that, uh, for ranked, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. Um. So, I mean, that kind of goes to my next question. Like, do you think we actually need balance and beyond that? Like, I'm team nerf nothing. Uh, I know I just say that about the health, but mm, like, I'm really team nerf nothing. Nerf nothing. Like, nerf, nerf nothing. It, I, 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 I don't know. I've been thinking about this counterplay around. If the game's been out for a week and, and there's already counterplay around, like, I know how to fight uh, Super Vegito's now. No, no, okay. So, yeah. so I, I personally, um, I have gotten better at fighting fusions and stuff. So it is, I think a lot of it is kind of a good thing. You can beat those stronger characters. I still think that they should have less health. But when it comes to like the cheesy stuff, like uh, Yajirobe, I'm glad that I, I'm, gl yeah. I'm glad he's getting there. I'm glad um, it's going to. I saw you tweet that. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that's getting nerfed. Uh, I haven't fought him personally in, uh, you know, in my matches, but I think that, uh, I think him getting nerfed and hearing all everybody's concerns about that, uh, it definitely is great that the Bandai and Spike Chunsoft are fixing that. Because the fact that he can revive, he can revive, not revive himself, but get all his health back from a Senzu Bean is crazy. Yeah. And then all he has to it do is crazy is especially in DP battle. Like if you if you're playing with him and you're actually pretty good at the game, you can dodge until you get enough uh uh get enough uh points. I forgot what the exact name is, but you can get enough points to where you can actually use blast yeah blast dots. So you can use the Senju Bean. So it's like if you're if you're decent at the game, he'll never die. So we're talking about Spark and Zero, and there's no better way to talk about Spark and Zero than to play the game and and watch somebody get washed. Probably me. I think Love is is pretty good. But here's Doctor Love. I'll link his channel below. Check him out. Wait, do you have after image? No, you don't. You just good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't activate it. No. Oh, I was like, wait, how's he? <laughs> My defense is just really trash. So as a as a player, I feel like you're overall all well-rounded, balanced player. I've seen you play. Um, I wanted to see you in the tournament, but you know you you had some some family stuff come up. So as a as a player that I see has a lot a little bit more balance to you. What do you what do you suggest for people who are like approaching this game for the first time? Because I'm I'm team learn offense then learn defense. Because the defense is going to be consistent anyway, just because you're you're going to be online. So like some of your counters, like we have a. We have a pretty decent connection because we're both people who like play with decent connections. But like, you'll be playing against somebody who's just on Wi-Fi. You know, you're probably on Wi-Fi. I don't know, but they'll just be on Wi-Fi and they have bad Wi-Fi. I have fiber, so like, if I play, I'm usually getting like 300 up, 300 down. I'm good to go. It's not a deal. It's not a big deal for me. So my defense to me is like a little bit more inconsistent. Whereas my offense, I can put on pressure and and do the things I want to do. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm the same way too. I think if you learn the offense first, because it's weird because. I don't know like what type of complaints y'all have been seeing, but I see more complaints about people saying that the defensive options are just too much in this game, which I mean, I think if you kind of, I personally don't get it. Like, I just don't agree. But I think if you know the game enough offensively to even where like when I was just using Kid Goku, when I was doing a lot of the vanishes and stuff, a lot of people would try to use that more as like a defense mechanism. That's crazy. They'll use it as like a defense mechanism. <laughs> but I feel like if you kind of use it to your advantage where you do it more in like an offensive uh, strategic way, then it can help you a lot more to where you don't need to do that much stuff defensively. But if that makes sense, I don't even know if I articulated that correctly, but you sound like punch, punch guard when you vanish behind them and things like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, I feel you. Yeah. I missed that time. Uh oh, you love that move, don't you? I do because people online don't like fight against it, so they don't know that it ha it comes down. They don't even like come behind me sometimes. They just like block, or, like stand out the way. Oh yeah, that's so it true. gives me time to kind of like get hit. Especially if you just stand there, you will take all nine thousand. Sometimes you'll take a, a cool two. That's crazy. But most of the time, you're taking a cool nine. I don't even like Krillin's ultimate. I hate his ultimate. Really? You know, I feel that same way about Gohan. Ironically enough. Which one, team? Super Saiyan two team? Uh, nah, the ultimate Gohan. I think like I think it's cool. Oh, but his is boring. All his moves are boring. Yeah. Then wasn't I talking to you about that? Yeah. All his moves are boring. It's like they put no sauce on him, and I don't like that. Yeah, I don't either. Because Ultimate Gohan should be it should have sauce and like like his grab doing a little windmill thing. Like I noticed what he did in TLP. 
But like, I don't want to see that. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't either. I think that the way that is animated, especially, just looks lame. Oh no, I tried to go around it. That's actually what I. Another thing too, I think that people need to talk more about that type of stuff in this game. Like the the way that things are in terms of like balancing and all that. Like I kind of get some of the complaints, but I'm just wondering where some of the sauce with these characters went. That's my main concern. Dang, I'm just getting yeah, destroyed. I feel. I gotta ask you more questions because that's the only way I can get you to like. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Woo. That's nasty. Oh no, you're one more character. Ah! Well, that's the that's the that's the counterplay for after image, and because I used after image so much, I had to learn that because I had to learn what people were gonna do, which was they're gonna try and block me, or, or excuse me, they're gonna try and um, stall me out with key blast, and they're gonna try and grab me. But I mean, as you play the game, you're looking at the things you do, and you're like, okay, well, this is what I do, so I got to make sure that. I know the counterplay to my counterplay. Exactly. Plus, I will say, too, I feel Which I like... I think it's fun. What are you going to say? I said, I feel like that's also really fun. Exactly. All right. <laughs> oh, I have one more. I forgot. Oh, Kid Boo. You know, it's crazy. This is the first time I fought Kid Boo in this game. Well, I, saw, I thought he was bad, and then I realized I was bad, and then I started playing him more. I don't like his skills that much. Um... Oh, I almost... Let's go. I was... Look, 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 I had to stop talking so I can make sure I can hit that. <laughs> oh, my God. Is this going to... No, I... Well, I think... So. Yeah, it's not going to do that much, though, because I didn't get to charge it. Yeah, that was... Yeah, it was whatever. He's right there in front of you. I also think a thing that should be fixed is, like, finding people. Because that it shouldn't be that hard to find a character that's right in front of me. I agree. I think that you actually um, lose focus on characters way too much, too. Like, I, I don't think if my yeah, opponent easy. switches... I think... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I don't... Yes, yeah, I was saying, like, switching and stuff like that is too often. Like, I'm okay with it for an ultimate, because it's an ultimate. Cool. You know, but, like, also, let's... All right, I'm dead. <laughs> for an ultimate... For an ultimate, cool. But, like, if I'm switching out characters, if I'm doing something like that, like, especially, like... Like someone someone does whatever move and is right in front of me, I don't I don't like that. 